I love Pikmin. I've played all the games and you should buy Pikmin 4 right now if you haven't already. Now, I don't really have a good transition to get me to say, that got me thinking. Because honestly, this idea just kind of popped into my head while I was playing Pikmin 4. But you read the title. You know what idea I had. Today, we are finding out how heavy the Pikmin are. That's right. We're doing math. Oh, come on. You didn't expect any math when you clicked on a video with this title. Let's start with the easy part. Pikmin 4 measures mass with a seemingly non-specific unit of measurement. For example, most Pikmin simply weigh one unit. But we want to use a unit of measurement we humans use, like grams or pounds. So we have to find the exact weight of something in Pikmin 4 that has one of these weight values so that we can convert the Pikmin weight units into one of our units. Ah, oh, jeez, an accurate mass? What, is an object with the real weight engraved into it just gonna fall right out of the sky? <laughs> Stealing shape for less bit. Okay, that's not the sound gold makes when it falls. Luckily for us, Pikmin 4 blesses us with the golden vaulting table. A treasure found in the game with words engraved into it, including its weight. One kilo, or one kilogram. And since this treasure is shown to have an in-game weight of a thousand units, we could convert those units into kilograms. Which means a thousand units is one kilogram. But Nick, says one of my non-American viewers, one kilogram is just a thousand grams. Doesn't that mean one Pikmin unit is equal to one gram? And you would be exactly right, dear non-American viewer. We can now reasonably assume that one Pikmin unit is equal to one gram, which makes the converting very easy. As mentioned, most Pikmin weigh one unit, while purple Pikmin weigh 10, meaning that most Pikmin must weigh either one gram, or 0.035274 ounces, and 10 grams, or 0.35274 ounces. Yay, video over! <laughs> no. You see, I hate myself and feel the need to make things needlessly complicated. And luckily for me, there's one Pikmin that does that for me in spades. The Yellow Pikmin. <laughs> so the Yellow Pikmin's main gimmick is its immunity to electricity, but its other gimmick in Pikmin 4 is its ability to be thrown much higher than other Pikmin. That must mean it's lighter than the others, right? Um, actually, Pikmin 4's Piclopedia mentions that the Yellow Pikmin, and I quote, uses the air-like lamellae on its head to soar to great heights, meaning that it is in fact the same weight as the other one-unit Pikmin since it just uses its ears to fly higher. Okay, but that makes, like, no sense. You could throw Pikmin pretty much vertically upwards in this game, and the yellow Pikmin absolutely demolishes the other Pikmin in terms of height. You're telling me that its ears let it fly to the top of my screen? You think if I threw a flying squirrel and a regular squirrel of the same size and mass perfectly vertically that the flying squirrel would finish at nearly double the height of the regular squirrel? No, the flappy skin only helps it travel longer horizontal distances. The same would likely be the case for the yellow Pikmin. So don't interrupt me again with your stupidness. Now, to find the mass of yellow Pikmin, we need to figure out how high it gets thrown compared to regular Pikmin. In this case, I'll use blue Pikmin. The only thing we need is a good in-game object to find the height of so that we could accurately measure. And thanks to the Pikmin wiki, we have exactly that. The wiki page for Captain Olimar Ooh. describes him as 1.9 centimeters tall when not wearing any of his space gear. And to round out the number, we'll say that his space boots are one millimeter tall, meaning that if we measure Olimar from the top of his head to the bottom of his boots, we'll get two centimeters. What makes this measuring even easier is that Olimar is the same size as the default player character of Pikmin 4, so we could use her as our ruler. And to make things a little quicker, I will refer to the player character as Lisa from now on, one of the names shown in Pikmin 4 promotional material. So. Throwing the blue Pikmin and measuring up to the lowest part of its body when it's at its peak height gives us a height of 7.9 centimeters from Lisa's hand. And throwing the yellow Pikmin gives us a height of approximately 12.614285 centimeters high from Lisa's hand. I also counted the time from the last frame of a 30 FPS video where Lisa holds the Pikmin to the frame where the Pikmin reaches its peak. The blue Pikmin takes 11 out of 30 frames, while the yellow Pikmin took 13 out of 30. Now I knew what I wanted to do. Assuming Lisa throws the Pikmin as hard as she possibly can and pretending the Pikmin were thrown directly vertically to simplify things a bit, I needed to find the force at which she throws the blue Pikmin, which would also be the force at which she throws the yellow Pikmin. Using the formula of force equals mass times acceleration, I could isolate yellow Pikmin's mass once I find the force and acceleration. But first, I need to find blue Pikmin's acceleration to find out the force. 
This part proved to be a little more challenging than expected. At first, I tried fighting the speed of the blue Pikmin by dividing its peak height by the amount of time it took to get there, then dividing that by the time again to find its acceleration. Then I realized I was stupid because the object would be decelerating due to gravity, not accelerating. So I erased what I just did. Next, I gave up. Then, I went on Discord to ask my friend I'm the Malix, who is good at math, to solve my problem. I proceeded to send him this. Okay, this might sound really weird, but it's for a video. I am throwing an object with a mass of 0.001 kilograms, 0.079 meters vertically above my hand. The object descended for 0.36 repeating seconds before reaching its peak. At what force did I throw the object at? Don't ask why. To which he replied, rather quickly might I add, Minus 0 0.0035906 newtons. Okay, how? Uh, you calculate the initial velocity, the force, of the, the mass, and the acceleration and time. Now, I didn't get what any of that last message meant, so I dedicated the rest of that day to figuring out how to get that answer on my own. I never did. So I decided to ask another friend, just to see if they could guide me in the right direction. Hello, chat GPT. I know you're like, stupid, but I want to see if you can help me with a mass slash physics problem. It then proceeded to give me the gravitational force every time I asked. It was then I realized the gravity in Pikmin 4 is most definitely not the same as our gravity. So yeah, erase everything chat GPT did. But maybe I'm the Malik's figured it out. After all, I never managed to get the same answer he did. Okay, I'm rereading this and I don't get it. Explain. Like, just tell me what you did, because I'm trying a bunch of stuff and I've never gotten that answer. I did that. Chat GPT. I'm throwing an object with a mass of 0 0.001 kilograms, 0 0.079 meters vertically above my hand. The object is sent for 0 0.366 whatever seconds before reaching its peak. At what port did I throw the object at? Why are you asking the kid who didn't take physics? It was then that I remembered, I'm the Malix didn't take physics in high school like I did. So erase everything he did too. Yeah, I didn't think that would work. At this point, it had been nearly two days since I started trying to figure out the yellow Pikmin's mass, and I had gotten pretty much nowhere. That is, until I realized the way the Pikmin ascends and descends could be fit perfectly into a position time graph in parabolic form. And so I made this on Desmos.com. With this, I could figure out the instantaneous velocity of the blue Pikmin at one point of its ascent, then use that and the velocity at the peak, which would be zero since it's at the peak, to find the gravitational acceleration of Pikmin 4. With this method, I determined that the instantaneous velocity of blue Pikmin at 0.01 seconds was 0.419 meters per second, meaning that the gravitational acceleration is approximately negative 1.174766355 meters per second squared. Multiply that by the mass of the blue Pikmin and you get the gravitational force. Then I got stuck again. The gravitational force isn't the same between both the blue Pikmin and the yellow Pikmin, so I only have the acceleration of the yellow Pikmin now. It's not possible to find the force or the mass from just acceleration. So, I got to thinking once again. Oh, come on dude, it's been two days, give me something. Cat GPT, I've asked you like five times now, come on, give me something! <laughs> you didn't take visit. Why do I bother asking you? That just what? <laughs> I, I just want to know the weight of a yellow pig man. <laughs> You're not doing anything. I've used every link on this stupid search engine. It hasn't given me anything. I'm trying to just do simple physics, stupid math, and it, I, I can't find anything. 
I'll just try riding. Wait. Oh. It was then that I realized, on the first frame of each clip, the Pikmin are both still in Lisa's hand. So if I could find the distance traveled between the first frame and the second frame, I could assume that for that distance, the Pikmin is still in Lisa's hand, being accelerated until she lets go and the Pikmin starts decelerating due to gravity. With this information, I went back to the graph and found the instantaneous velocity of the blue Pikmin just as Lisa let go of it, which ended up being approximately 0.39182231411 meters per second, meaning that the acceleration of the blue Pikmin, accounting for gravity, is approximately 11.75466942 meters per second squared. Now, just like I said, that's our total acceleration, including the deceleration the Pikmin is suffering. So if we want the acceleration from the throw only, we just subtract the resisting acceleration from the total. In this case, 11.75466942 meters per second squared minus minus 1.1747663555 meters per second squared. And since we're subtracting a negative number, it becomes an addition, meaning the acceleration from Lisa's throw is 12.92943578 meters per second squared. Now we have the blue Pikmin's mass and its acceleration, meaning we could calculate the force at which Lisa throws Pikmin, assuming she throws as hard as she can. The calculation is simple this time. 0.01 kilograms times 12.92943578 meters per second squared, giving us a throwing force of 0.012924... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, number on screen. Newtons. Yeah. Alright. We're in the home stretch now. We just have to find Yellow Pikmin's acceleration to find its mass. So I made another position time graph, but for the Yellow Pikmin this time. Doing the same thing we did to calculate Blue's instantaneous velocity and acceleration gives us a velocity of approximately 0.537305547.3 meters per second, which gives us an acceleration of approximately 60.11916642 meters per second squared. Again, since this includes our deceleration from gravity, we have to subtract the deceleration to find our acceleration in Lisa's hand. And of course, gravity doesn't change, so we subtract the same number giving us an acceleration of approximately 17.29393278 meters per second squared. Putting this acceleration and the throwing force we found earlier into the equation for force will finally yield the results we've been looking for. By isolating the mass variable, we divide the force by the acceleration, which gives us the yellow Pikmin's mass of approximately 0.0007476283 kilograms, or 0.7476283 grams, or 0.02637181220066 ounces for my Imperial System viewers. Phew. Well, now you know how heavy a Pikmin is. Well, I guess you knew a while ago if you believed the whole ear thing for yellows. But whatever. Please tell me how wrong my calculations are in the comments below. I know that came off sarcastic, but I would love to know if I made any mistakes or leaps in logic, and how heavy a yellow Pikmin really is if my answer is wrong. And I know this is different from my usual content. I usually don't do this game theory-esque stuff. But I just wanted to make a Pikmin video because I love Pikmin. But I just finished playing all the games recently, so I didn't want to replay them so soon just for a video. So I did this instead. Hope you enjoyed. And let me know if you want more stuff like this. And if you did enjoy, please consider liking, subscribing, and checking out some other videos. It would be greatly appreciated. And with that, I was being serious at the beginning. Go buy Pikmin 4 if you haven't already. R right now.